Hi, Singers fans. Today, we are very privileged to have with us once again, Miami Heat shooting and play development coach, Rob Fordor. It's good to see you again, coach. Oh, it's great to be here, JR, especially under these circumstances. First of all, massive congratulations for winning the Eastern Conference Finals against a really good Boston Celtics team. Let's, let's talk about what happened after the game. Um, how did you guys celebrate and what did the coaches and players say to one another? <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, I think uh, there, there was obviously a celebration everybody saw on TV. There's always the trophy ceremony for the Eastern Conference Championship. And, you know, our guys were very excited um, knowing that uh, in our minds that, that uh, the job's not done. Um, this was a goal, but it was a, uh, a stair step into where the guys really want to be. And, you know, there's a lot of appreciation because <laughs> you just don't get to do this all the time. You know, um, we're living in weird, uh, rare times when um, somebody like uh, LeBron James plays in nine out of 10 finals. This just doesn't happen, you know. <clears throat> and there's two guys out there right now. So, um, LeBron James goes into his ninth or his 10th finals in 11 years. And Andre Iguodala, who now is with us, gets to play in his sixth consecutive finals. So, you know, the, the, there was some, there's certainly some joy. I think there's a lot of pride for how certain people did what they did to get us over the top of that, um, that hurdle. I think what, uh, what you saw our, our two young guys do, Tyler and Duncan, they were, they were fantastic, especially coming down the stretch. Um, what Bam was able to do, what Goran's been able to do, and, and obviously Jimmy. Um, <clears throat> Andre has been working and working and working, and you see uh, he had a big game for us. Uh, Jay Crowder was, was a special player for us too. And, and everybody was engaged. Everybody is together and – that's why we're here. So pretty cool stuff. Really proud of them. It is really cool. I mean, you are entering these finals as the number five seed in the East. And um, before this season, I think only three teams, either fifth or below, have actually made it to the NBA finals in the history of the NBA. Um, you, have, you have the six-seeded Rockets in 81, um, the six-seeded Rockets again, who won in 95, and then the eighth-seeded Knicks in 99. And you are now the fourth team to do so in the history of the NBA. Um, how do you feel about that? It's, you know, I, I don't think anybody really thinks of things like that. I think that's, uh, that becomes part of the narrative as, as uh, you know, the thing about it is you're going to have to beat great teams regardless of what seed you are. You know, when you get down to the, when you get down to the end, you're going to play the best professionals who are playing the best in the world at the time that you're playing them. So here we are, and, and um, you know, are we considered underdogs? Yeah, sure. I think, uh, I don't know if we were favored in any game after the first series. Um, <clears throat> so it's nothing new, but uh, each, task, it's, each task becomes more daunting. And the thing is, is in order to win a championship, you're going to have to beat somebody great <laughs> at some point, you know? And you're going to have to beat them at full strength. You're going to have to beat somebody that's playing well. And, and that's, that's the nature of the beast. And, and especially with our guys, I don't think they'd want it any other way. You know, people are going to try and find some reason why um, somebody like us is in the finals. Though they're going to blame it on the bubble. Or they're going to blame it on some weird thing in the season. But the fact of the matter is you have to come get on the wood, compete, and out-compete. Um, people that may be more talented than you or, or whatever it is, you're going to have to out-compete whoever it is that's in front of you. And so far, that's what our guys have been able to do. And you definitely have competed on the floor. I mean, I, I don't think any team has competed as hard as, as a team um, as the Miami Heat in this playoffs. Um, and then now you'll be facing LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and the Los Angeles Lakers. And as you've mentioned earlier, this is LeBron's 10th final and everyone is expecting him to win his fourth championship. Um, what do you need to do as a team to beat the Lakers and win the title? 
You know, that's a great question. If, uh, if I knew that, I could say, hey, we're going to win the title. I'll see you in two weeks, you know. Um, I, I think what you have to do is, is obviously prepare the best you can mentally, physically, uh, and then you've got to go play – play in a way that you have nothing left at the end of each game and then see what the results are. You know, nobody can guarantee results. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Um, crazy things happen all the time on the way to championships, good, bad, and otherwise. So um, what do we have to do? We have to keep doing what we've been doing. We've got to do it at the highest level we've ever done it uh, as will they. So whoever does that better, is going to hold the trophy up at the end of the series. And it's, um, it'll be a great thing for both teams. I think the cool thing about a seven game series is each team makes the other team better. And we progressed as we've, you know, we, we played a really good game to clinch the Eastern conference championship. And now it's time we're going to have to play four phenomenally great games to go hold up the the big trophy so we'll see what happens yeah. it's gonna be a lot of fun you you have three two days to, um, to prepare for the finals um can you actually share with us what you do as a coaching team to prepare the players for the series and for game one um well you know you have to spend time on <clears throat> on the opponent on your opponent you have to get to know who you're playing um what things they're trying to do, how they want to attack you. You've got to get into the film of each player, see what, um, uh, see what each player's tendencies are, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, how they've been playing, how you want to attack each player. Um, and then really you've got to get your mind, you've got to kind of rest from what you've just done and then emotionally ramp up, mentally ramp back up for the task at hand. Um, knowing that you're going to be in the highest level of competition that you've ever been in your whole life. Um, and then once you get, uh, once you start ramping back up mentally, you put in, you know, you get your, you get your details of your game plan, how you're going to go about game one and, and, uh, and you deal with game one. And it, it does sound cliche, but you are literally playing one game at a time. You can never get ahead of yourself. Um, if you really, you know, if you really break it down, the first thing that you want to win is the section of the game that comes before the first time out. And then you just start stacking things up. You try to win that, win that section, win the next section, you know, one possession at a time. And if you can, you know, get your mind wrapped around that kind of a mental approach, it gives yourself the best chance to win. So our guys have been great at it. And, um, this is something they want. Uh, we don't have anybody that I think that's afraid of the moment and they're looking forward to the challenge and uh, hopefully we can come out of the uh, series on the other side, holding up that big trophy. <clears throat> that's great to hear. And, and it's also good for all our young viewers and young players who are listening in that, you know, even at the top level, you focus one game at a time, one position at a time. And that's how you approach a, a big game, even as big as the NBA Finals. Yeah, that's, that's so, all you can play, right? You can only play one play. <laughs> and then when the next play absolutely. comes, you just play the next play. So uh, it's just stacking up little mini wins. And at the end, hopefully you have one more than the other team. So, so what's the best matchup for you against the Lakers? I mean, you have Jimmy Butler versus LeBron James. Bam Adebayo versus Anthony Davis. And then you have a whole host of role players that you mentioned earlier that have really stepped up from Tyler Hero to Duncan Robinson, Jay Crowder, and even Goran Dragic. And I mean, you, you have Andre Iguodala, the finals MVP in 2015, when he guarded LeBron James and helped the Golden State Warriors win their first title then. <coughs> Who needs to step up in this series if the Heat are to become champions? The Miami Heat. Miami Heat. <laughs> yeah, I think I think people get caught up all the time in this guy versus that guy, and and it's kind of a naive uh, thought process to think that that matchup is going to be uh, is going to be key to the series because you don't guard LeBron James but with one guy, you do it with an, an entire team, and everybody 
um, everybody guards one guy as five. And, you know, the strength of what we've been trying to do is playing five as one. And if we don't play five as one, um, they may be able to say, say the same thing. They don't, if they don't play five as one, you lose. So individual matchups, uh, you can't point to any one thing. This guy's got to outplay that guy. You want to try to win your minutes, um, compete, uh, make an impact on the game. And if you play as a group, the strengths of your team will show versus the weaknesses of their team or the strengths of their team. So it is a team game. There's a group of guys that holds up the trophy, not just one guy. And, you know, we try to approach it like that. I think you, you see even with our best player, Jimmy Butler, he's not coming out here talking about Jimmy Butler. He's talking about Miami Heat. He's talking about, as all of our guys do. So we'll approach it that way. Uh, our matchup versus one guy is all of us. And if we all do our job, we'll have a chance to do well. So that's what we do. That, that's a great way to wrap this up. I mean, it's, Coach, it's fantastic to hear your insights as you prepare for the NBA Finals. Thank you so much for speaking with us from the bubble in Orlando. And we wish you all the best for Game 1. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll be here in two weeks with one more great story. <laughs> I, I, I look forward to that chat. Um, <laughs> and too. also, thank you to all our viewers as well for tuning in. Uh, if you want to follow Coach Rob, you can find him on Instagram at The Shooting Guy. And you can also subscribe to the Singapore Slingers Home Court channel on YouTube for more. And we hope to see you guys in two weeks.